For over 200 years, coal has been transported along the inland waterways of Britain. In fact, this year marks the bicentenary of the first canal to be specially built for the job. Every year, 11 and a half million tons of freight are carried, and three and a half million of them are coal. It's cheap and efficient, and men like Jack Monk have spent a lifetime traveling the pleasant countryside. It all looks leisurely, but the barges, or narrow boats as they're called, keep going from dawn to dusk, with no time out for shunting or traffic jams. But this particular journey is a special one for Mr. Monk and his family, they are bound for Aylesbury and the 8th Annual Parade of Boats. Five thousand or more people were expected to attend and the coal board had their own decorated narrow boat on hand to mark the occasion. The rally was organized by the Inland Waterways Association which is dedicated to keeping the canals and navigable rivers of Britain open for business and pleasure. People had come by boat from as far afield as Manchester. Only the right clothing was acceptable and nobody dared to own a shabby craft. It's largely due to the association that this Aylesbury branch of the Grand Junction Canal has been opened again to traffic. This year's rally once again demonstrated the enthusiasm of those who work to keep our waterways open. Arriving by RSPCA transport at a new home near London is a pit pony determined to become a film star in his own right. Film producer Peter Rogers, husband of Betty Box, gave Dinky from Barnsley a star's welcome when he came to start an early retirement. Dinky soon found that things were just to his taste. He was appearing in his first film, there was a ready-made fan club and friends of the press were there to record the occasion. For five of his nine years, Dinky has worked underground at Wombwell, Main Colliery. Every year, as mechanization increases and modern haulage systems are extended, the number of pit ponies goes down. On retirement, each is found a comfortable home. Soon, the Rogers family are to adopt another. Two's company, and I doubt if Dinky is likely to find anything to complain about to the film studio management. This is Bainham Pit in Monmouthshire. Coming off shift is Hayden Lewis, who works at the face. He's a cutter. Hayden is just off on a fortnight's holiday and he's going to spend part of it at Wortley Hall, once the home of the Earl of Warncliffe, and now a holiday and recreation centre for the workers of Yorkshire. It's a pleasant place with well-tended gardens and, at the moment, the Workers' Music Association's 15th Summer School is in progress. But let Hayden Lewis tell you about it himself. Everyone who comes here for the annual week's course is a practical and dedicated musician. Among the hundred students here this week, 21 of them, like myself, are minors. Listen quietly for a moment. Not only the wind can sing. Yes, from every window, the sound of music floats out across the garden. It's an ideal setting to talk of music and to learn of music. All kinds of music. <laughs> Brian Shaw of Hemsworth Colliery playing the drums in Owen Bryce's jazz outfit. The director of studies is Mr. Alan Bush, professor of composition at the Royal Academy. And that's Professor Knepler from Berlin. 
Mr. and Mrs. Horrocks are the honorary organizers of the school, which makes it possible for the country's workers and their families to come together and make music. Here's a miners brass group. The National Union of Mine Workers, the Coal Industry Social Welfare Organization, and many others all help. Listen to Hayden again. This year, 21 scholarships have enabled we miners and colliery workers to enjoy a holiday with music. And not only the company of mining colleagues, but the friendship of music lovers, young and old, who have come to Wortley Hall to make music. The National Coal Board Sea Boring Towers used for finding the whereabouts of undersea coal have become well-known sites along parts of our coast. Recently, undersea boring came into the headlines when Lord Robins, chairman of the board, visited one set off the shore of County Durham. The sea was choppy and his method of travel to the top was by basket. His companions were the divisional chairman, Dr. Reed, wearing the other white coat, and the tower superintendent, Mr. Sindel. Once there, and I expect pardonably relieved to have arrived safely, the methods of working were explained and the men who live and work there introduced. For several years now, the drills have been biting deep into the seabed to find the exact limits and quality of the extensive reserves which lie below. Cylindrical cores are cut out, and these are removed at intervals for the geologists to study and draw their conclusions. On this occasion, Lord Robin saw the latest specimens and many other things which showed him the extent of the work being done. This particular operation needs 20 boreholes, and it is expected that reserves worth 120 million pounds will be confirmed. Already this particular tower has proved supplies of coal which could extend the life of the Durham coal field by 200 years. The chairman's journey back was uneventful. His visit had underlined the importance of the task of confirming the exact position of future supplies of coal which can be worked from existing pits on the Durham coast. It is a task which the men of the sea tower are doing well. <laughs> 